Hey, what's going on guys? Jason Frosto for TennisUnleashed.net. Today we're doing a complete technique comparison and breakdown between Yannick Sinner and Novak Djokovic on their backhand sides. If you want to see what the differences and similarities between their backhands are, stay tuned. It's coming up next. All right, guys, before we get started here, we've got footage from Slow Mo Tennis's YouTube channel of Novak Djokovic here on the left side and Yannick Sinner. Over there on the right side, make sure you check out his YouTube channel and like and subscribe over there to his content. Let's get into this breakdown and comparison. So we got Djokovic here on the left side of the screen, right? Sinner over here on the right side of the screen from Indian Wells in 2024. Some practice sessions here. Let's jump in and kind of look at the technique side by side and just see what we see. So guys, both players start with a split step, getting their feet nice and wide with their base, right? You can see that. On both sides of the screen, we've got two fairly tall players here. Sinner, I think listed at six foot two, but we know he's at least six foot three at this point. And Djokovic also, you know, well above six foot. So pretty good height on these guys. But just moving forward from there with those splits, we notice a couple of things that are similar in the technique, but then also a couple of things that are a little bit different. Sinner's technique on the backhand side has evolved a little bit. We can see the differences here in the take back heights between Djokovic and Sinner. So Djokovic over here, right, racket head above his hands, pretty common technique on the tour. And then he's really turning his upper body and getting his chest pointed off to his left. He's getting a really good, what's called a unit turn, which is basically just turning your body as a unit here. So we can see the unit turn here, right? Racket head above his hands during that whole unit turn. Grip structure, kind of tough to tell what he's doing and holding from this angle. But we can see Sinner in a totally different position. Now Sinner has the racket head off to the left side of the hands, right? And his backhand's evolved a little bit again over the last few years, made some alterations and some tweaks to it. So he's got a pretty low starting point. This is a little bit more similar to something you might see from throwback to like David Nalbandian, who had more of a pendulum type swing on his two-handed backhand. But he's also getting, regardless of the take back height, he's also getting a unit turn with his body where his chest is gonna be facing the left side like this. Now, Sinner's preparation might be a little bit higher if the ball was, for instance, a high ball. They're both getting a ball here a little bit above waist height at contact. So from here, we see Sinner steps in and we notice that Djokovic's racket now, instead of being to the left side of his hands over here, the racket head at least, as he completes the turn, right, and starts to turn his body more, that racket head is now basically in line with his hands. It's just elevated and above his hands at this point. But look what Sinner's doing. Sinner, who had the racket head a little bit lower at first, right? In the beginning here, it was more even with the height of the hands at this point. Now that position has changed quite a bit. And we can see that as we move forward, the racket head is a little bit above the hands, okay? And this backhand, you know, this height and this position, a little bit more similar to something that Rafa does on his backhand. It's not like he's bringing it straight back, but it's off to the left side with the racket head here and above his hands here. But a totally different position than what we see Novak on the left side of the screen, right? Well above the hands, hands are in a higher position for this one right here. What Sinner's going for, in my opinion, he's going for a little bit more of a lag effect or kind of the rubber band effect on the forehand and backhand side, right? Which he creates really well on his forehand side. But again, here, and something I've talked about for years, but look at this lag position where the racket is here compared to Djokovic is here. And now as we come forward, we can see that Sinner here is doing a good job of looking over his front shoulder with his chin and his eyes. He's over the front shoulder. He's really turned his upper body well. Djokovic, same thing. Chin over the front shoulder, looking over and has really turned his upper body really well right here. So very similar position there, but the racket, right, in a totally different position. So from here, here's kind of where the magic happens for Sinner. We can see Djokovic's racket drops somewhat in a straight line back, and Sinner's racket comes from this position right here, right, setting up the lag, to this position here, and he does that really, really quickly. So look at the move of the tip of the racket head from here to here in the same number of frames as Djokovic came from position closer to here compared to Novak's, where he's just dropping to here 
and previously it came from about here. So that snap back effect, the amount that it snaps back for Sinner from here to here in the same amount of time as Djokovic is a considerably further distance. And if it's moving a further distance left to right, especially, it's creating more of that whip or leg effect. And if you look at Djokovic backhand, right, it's a phenomenal shot. It's a shot, I think it's one of the best backhands, obviously, in the world and in history, really. But could his backhand be a little bit better if he adopted a little bit more of a leg technique on his backhand? It's sort of the only thing he hasn't messed with technique-wise in his game because of how good it is. But maybe he could benefit a little bit from going to more of a leg-style backhand like Sinner has adopted here. And then Sinner, right? This is something I talked about in my Sinner video from years ago, why he gets so much power on his backhand. But the tip of his racket tends to, a lot of times, or especially in the past, it tends to get past his glutes here as far as the distance past the body before it snaps back to contact here. So his racket is moving further compared to Novak's. Novak's is just past almost the hamstring here. It moves a further distance back, which means it has to travel further forward to the ball, which means it has to be traveling faster to get to contact because they're going to get to contact here at the exact same time. Okay, just going back here again, because Sinner's racket is moving a further distance to the ball, but getting there at the exact same time, it means his racket has to be traveling faster, which provides more power, more spin, more racketed speed at the end of the day. But Look at a couple other things here real quick. Center, back arm, not completely straight. So the left arm, right? Left arm, not completely straight, has a slight bend in it. Djokovic, a little bit more of a bend at this stage of the swing. Front arm for both guys at this stage, almost completely straight, if not completely straight. It's hard to tell from this view. We'd have to use the side view to lock that out. But you can see those arm positions here. And again, from here... The relaxation of the arms and we can see the hips start to turn and uncoil into contact right so we're starting to use the leg drive here from the back leg to the front leg to create racketed speed and then those wrists will dip down below the ball okay for Djokovic the hitting arm position is a little bit different than it is for center when Djokovic was here he had more of an L shape with his you know left arm there at that point but moving forward from here, his left arm gets pretty darn straight to help him get below the ball. So now that left arm is completely straight. Where Sinner's left arm doesn't necessarily get completely straight in the backswing, right? It bends down, but his wrists really come down as well. And then at contact, there's a little bit of a difference at contact for both players as well. Djokovic's arm is a little bit more straight, the left one, not completely, but more straight than Sinner's left arm is at contact. Sinner tends to have his left arm a little bit more bent at contact than a lot of the male players do. It resembles a little bit more Davidenko in terms of the arm position at contact compared to a lot of guys who will have a left arm that's a little bit more straight like Djokovic with a right arm that's bent. Some other really valuable things right here, guys, just besides those things is the spacing. I've talked about spacing for years on the backhand, how important it is, and the distance from the body. And mainly that is your hitting hands right here. So your left and right hand. Basically looking for, are your hands, right, your left and right hand, are they to the left side of your body at contact with the ball? And both players achieve that position. One of the most common mistakes that rec players make is their hands here will be really close or closer to in here and they'll be jammed on their two-handed backhand. So we're looking for this type of space that we see with both players at contact, right? Just before that, though, as well, we also notice both guys really dip the tip of the racket, right, here below the ball before they come up to hit it, and they're also taking swings that are inside or closer to the body, right? The racket's close to the body, taking inside to outside swing paths to help create topspin on the shot. And that puts a little bit more rotation on it, gives us a better chance of making our shot inside the court. We'll also notice that the hitting shoulder, right, for both guys, a little bit higher for both players than the right shoulder. So the hitting shoulder, a little bit higher than the non-hitting shoulder. Eyes also down towards contact with the ball, just like this at contact. Important to keep that head still for balance purposes. And then we can see both guys raising up a little bit, using the legs and getting ready to recover for the next shot. So the body 
coming up and getting ready to recover for the next ball. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this complete technique breakdown and comparison between Yannick Sinner and Novak Djokovic. If you found this video helpful or you feel like you learned something today, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. It helps this channel continue to grow. I'm Jason Frosto for TennisUnleashed.net. I'll see you next time.